Hey everyone, it's Allison sitting in the middle of my kids' chaos. And the reason I'm doing that is because today we're talking about kids' books. So I figured what better place than to put myself in the middle of where it all happens. Um, obviously not just reading happens here, but lots of playing, lots of messes, lots of things that can pull your kids' attention away from the books they could be reading. Obviously kids have a lot going on and there's a lot that they could be doing and a lot that they should be doing, not just reading. My kids love to read, but they love to do all kinds of other things too. But one of the things that I love most about reading with kids is their certainty that the books that they read have to be the right ones. They need books that they love. If they don't love them, if they don't work for them, they're not going to read them. That's why I brought us in the middle of all of this distraction to talk about some books for a particular kind of reader. I want to talk about kids who consider themselves kind of sensitive readers. Now my youngest daughter is like this. She is nine years old um, and she has a very particular reading style. She is a little bit sensitive to the things that she reads, the media that she takes in. She can be easily scared. She is very empathetic and will get very sad if something sad happens. She needs books that play to those strengths but that also she can feel comfortable reading. So those are the books I'll be sharing with you today. So if you also have a sensitive middle grade reader, some of these books may be good choices for your reader. The first book I want to share today is Otter. Now this is the one book that I'm going to talk about today that I actually haven't read yet. Uh, my daughter just got this one. This is by Katherine Applegate who is just an amazing children's author. If you haven't read any books by her, definitely pick them up for your child. And I have a, a few others to share by her as well. Otter, O-D-D-E-R, is about an otter who uh, is attacked by a, a great white shark. And it's inspired by the true story of a Monterey Bay Aquarium program that paired orphaned otter pups with surrogate mothers. So um, again, we haven't read this one yet, but I just know she's going to love it because Catherine Applegate writes these extremely sensitive books with wonderful animal characters and um, I can't wait to read it. So this is a new one from Applegate, so you may want to pick it up for your child. The next one that my daughter has loved is called The Antidotes. Now my daughter has kind of a scientific mind. She loves anything science related. And this book is about um, a group of children who've come back to school after the pandemic. So it ties in all of these kids experiences with the pandemic only to learn through their science class that the Chesapeake Bay has been polluted by this plastic eating bacteria that was supposed to rid the bay of plastic. But now instead it's made the water unhealthy for everybody. So these kids are very concerned about it and they come up with this plan to create a video game to get the word out to other kids and to get them to test their water. I love this book because it's this group of kids who all sort of have these different talents, these different interests, and they come together to come up with a solution for other kids. And I think so many kids will relate to this because it brings in a lot of the fears that they live through with the pandemic, but it also makes them problem solvers in their own neighborhood. Now, my daughter is loving this book as a scientist herself. Uh, that again is called The Antidotes, Pollution Solution. Another series that I want to share is um, this one. There are two books in this series, Ways to Grow Love and Ways to Make Sunshine, and they're both by Renee Watson. And it's about this sweet girl named Ryan who's going through a lot of changes in her family. Her, her dad has lost his job, so her family's had to move to a new house. And then her mother um, is going to have a baby, so she's got to adjust to all of those changes. I think it's relatable to a lot of kids who go through a lot of changes in their lives and they're trying to figure out how to be good family members, good daughters, good sisters, good friends, while keeping kind of a positive outlook. So this again is ways to grow lost and ways to make sunshine. Next book my daughter's enjoyed is called Maybe Maybe Marisol Rainey. It's by Erin and Trada Kelly. And she is just a wonderful author. This is about a girl who has a lot of fears in her life. Um, and it kind of makes her afraid to even try things with her friends. So um, it's kind of a simple story for early elementary readers about how she goes about trying to conquer those fears. And if you like this one, Erin Entrada Kelly is just this wonderful author. She also wrote this book that I love called We Dream of Space, which is kind of historical fiction for maybe a little bit older elementary reader uh, set during the time of the, the Challenger disaster. And that's another great one for kids who are working through understanding some of the great disasters in our history, and it's a really sensitive look at that 
topic. So that's another one, We Dream of Space, along with Maybe Maybe Marisol Rainey. The next one is Luna Howls at the Moon. This is a really sweet book about a therapy dog who works with a group of children who are in therapy for various reasons. And they have this group therapy once a week um, where they all kind of get together and, and talk about different things. And one week, one of the children does not show up. So the kids sneak out along with Luna to go and find their friend who did not show up to therapy. Now they go on this big adventure and we're, we're kind of inside Luna's head. And she feels like she has to protect those kids and make sure that they get to where they're going safely and get back to their parents and their therapist safely. This is a great book for animal lovers. Um, it's also a great book to kind of give kids a peek into the difficulties of some of their peers. Maybe if kids are going through some of the same difficulties as these kids in the books, it could also be very relatable. Um, we loved reading this one. We loved Luna. She's a very sweet dog. This is a great one for sensitive readers. The next one is called Ranger in Time, Escape from the Twin Towers. Now, I actually haven't read this one with my daughter, but she's been reading it. This is a great little series for younger readers, this Ranger in Time series. It kind of gives them another entry into some of these disasters. You know, it can be difficult to talk to our kids about things like 9-11, some other historical topics, but when they have a dog kind of bringing them into, into the story, it kind of helps them understand and helps them learn about these historical events in maybe a way that's not quite so upsetting uh, if they just kind of got the facts that wasn't softened by, you know, a wonderful dog character and other children in the story. It looks like there are also books about D-Day and Hurricane Katrina, the Titanic, and um, one called Night of Soldiers and Spies, which I um, am guessing is kind of a, a war novel. So. That again is Ranger in Time, a whole series of books about various historical events. I promised more Catherine Applegate and I have a couple here. I've got The One and Only Ivan and The One and Only Bob. Now you've probably heard of these books. There is a third book in this series coming up called The One and Only Ruby and we are so excited to read that one. This again um, is a, another wonderful Catherine Applegate series about animals. And it also inspired by the story of a gorilla who was held in a mall, um, kind of as an attraction. And Bob is his little dog friend in this second book. Um, we loved being inside Ivan's head in the first book and Bob's in the second. And we know that we will love following the story with their friend Ruby, who is a young elephant in the third book. So if you have not read these books, please pick them up. And I think there's also a movie along with the, these. We have not watched that yet, but we're very excited about these. These were some of our favorite books to read together. Just a great series for empathetic kids. Again, kids who love science, love to read about animals. Um, my daughter adored these books. Some other books that she loves to read, she likes more kind of lighthearted books. She really enjoys the Babysitter's Little Sister books, which have been around for ages. Um, she actually likes to read the graphic novels first and then she loves to read the, um, the, text, the text version of those novels. And Karen is just kind of a relatable character for, for kids. She kind of gets herself into trouble. She doesn't always do the right thing. And my daughter really enjoys following along with Karen's stories. She likes the easy reading of the graphic novels first and then she loves diving into the longer version to kind of experience the story again, but in a different way. That again is the Babysitter's Little Sister series, which you have probably heard of, but definitely still popular and still loved today. The next one that I wanna share is the Ivy and Bean series. Now this book is, I think it's the 12th book in the series. Yes, the 12th book in the series. My daughter really loves this one. Uh, it's just a simple little series about two friends who originally didn't like each other, but they ended up being best friends and they're very supportive of each other. They, they kind of get into a little trouble, but not too much trouble. And it's just a really great kind of demonstration of friendship. Um, I like this better than the Junie B. Jones series. I feel like Junie has a little bit of an edge that my daughter doesn't really relate to, but Ivy and Bean are very sweet. Um, they are not perfect. They, they do get into trouble with one another, but they're very um, good friends to each other, and she is always excited when we find a new Ivy and Bean book to read. The last one that I want to share is called Signs of Survival, a memoir of the Holocaust. 
by Renee Hartman and Joshua M. Green. This is a, a difficult topic, particularly for sensitive readers. When my daughter first picked this up, we had to discuss what death camps were because that came up in the book and she had not heard that before. So I gave her a little bit of a background about the Holocaust. Um, she is learning more through this book. This is about two sisters who were captured and taken to a concentration camp, but one of them is deaf. So they communicate with one another through sign language. And it's about their struggle to stay connected and to survive through this horrible, horrible experience. And my daughter is reading this now and her older sister has read it and has been talking to her about it. I know that she's going to have questions, but I feel like it is valuable for kids to learn about some of these historical events through the lens of books written for children um, in a way that children can understand and children can digest. The Holocaust is something so horrible that none of us can really understand it. But children's books that provide these personal stories that are relatable to kids does give them kind of an entry into the topic. So um, again, this is called Signs of Survival. Um, my oldest daughter has read it several times and my youngest daughter is now reading it and is very intrigued and is learning a lot. So those are just a few of the books that sensitive readers like my daughter may enjoy. If you have a sensitive reader, you might want to try some of these, try some of these authors. Um, I would love to know what your sensitive readers have loved and what has resonated with them. If you'd like a printable version of this list, you can subscribe on my website below and um, get a printable version of this one as well as a number of other reading lists that also include some other middle grade books that your kids may enjoy. So I hope you will subscribe. Let me know again what other books you might recommend to sensitive readers. I feel like I should try to uh, maybe pick up some of this chaos, but I think I will leave that for my kids. But until next time, thank you for watching.